Because it's a very celebrational service, I want to take time to just read a few, uh, few verses from the Bible and share with you a few thoughts and we will come to prayer. I am so excited for tonight. I am so excited to see uh, we're going to pray for people who are sick tonight. If you are sick, I know there are some people specifically came for this. I have faith inside of me bubbling that Jesus who was alive yesterday is the Jesus who can heal people today. People who have headaches, people who have back pains, people who have things that maybe the doctors have done their best or the medicine has done his best. Today you are in a place and I know maybe you just came, you got invited and you're just kind of observing and watching and that's completely fine. But if we will be giving out a hundred dollars here, it would be foolish to observe and watch and not to reach out and take. Amen. And I'm not giving anything out but if Jesus is offering somebody help, healing and salvation, this is a good time not to be an observer but to say, Jesus, you are going to be my Jesus and you are going to touch my case for the glory of God. Can somebody say amen. Also those people who are watching today, it's going to be something incredible but for the first time we're going to also pray for people who are watching on live, live stream, that God is going to touch them and that God is going to bring healing to their lives in Jesus name. We are coming to a time and a season in our church where we are going to see hundreds and hundreds of people being healed every service from incurable diseases where they will bring back medical reports showing we already have these things but there's going to be so much more where people who have torments at night or mental disorders schizophrenia epilepsy all kinds of mental disorders where Jesus is going to touch people where services are no longer just going to be somebody inviting or dragging somebody but somebody hearing about it on Facebook on TV and all around that God heals and they will come and say I'm waiting for that prayer where Jesus Christ can touch my case this is our destiny and it's going to grow into something more amazing. We are young but we are passionate for the things of the Spirit of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Gospel of John which is the third book in the New Testament. Gospel of John and chapter 1 and verse 35 and down. And we have the verses right here for you if you did not bring your Bible with you. Again the next day John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked he said behold the Lamb of God. And two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. I'm going to stop just on this for the shortage of time that we have today. And the, the thought that I want to title today is, let's put the background so I remember what the thought is. Essentials to entirety. Essentials to entirety. It's actually very simple. Maybe the words are a little bit... Um, put together but it's very simple. Your and my life is really made out of three main components. First component is your physical life. It's the life where you live, go to school, get married, have a date, well first get a date then get married, get education, if you have children, build a nice home, get a car, get retirement and then they carry you back to the church for the last time except this time you're dead. That's the first part. It's the physical life that you live in right now. This physical life consumes the most time. It requires so much of our energy, so much of our brains, so much of our efforts. It requires us to sleep, eat, fellowship. This physical life. Aspect one. Aspect two. There is a life that also exists when you die. The Bible talks about this life. Jesus talks about this life and there's thousands of people who when they died they had a chance to see a glimpse of this life. We call this the eternal life. Means this life that will only start when we die. Because come on many times you probably looked at your life and you're like there, there has to be more than this. I mean I'm like a little rabbit in, in a little circle and then they're all done. It's all done. I mean what is this for? There has to be more. I mean deep inside the Bible says God planted eternity in the hearts of man. It means deep within us there is a sense of life is not going to end when we die. So second aspect of life, eternal life. And there's a third aspect of life. And this third aspect of life is this, is that while we live on this he earth here right now, within this physical life is also another life that we cannot see with our physical eyes. It's called spiritual life. 
Now I understand many of you here are very educated, very smart and sometimes the smarter person becomes, they could also become a little bit dumb. Sometimes, not always. Where people, you know, in the country where I came from, it used to be atheistic country, communistic country and teachers would get up and say things like, if you cannot see it, it doesn't exist. And they would make fun of Christians for believing in God whom people cannot see and they say that we don't believe in God because we cannot see him. And one particular time one teacher did that and she said, see you can see the TV screen, well at the time they didn't have TV screens, there was a dashboard. She said you can see the board, the board exists. She says you can see the chair, the chair exists. You can see the table, the table exists. And the atheistic teacher looked at the students and says, can you see God? And old giggle, <laughs> no we can't. God does not exist. And little Johnny rose his hand and he says, teacher can I ask you a question? She said yes. Since you base your idea of something's existence based on if you can see it, can we see your brain? Everybody said <laughs> no. The teacher does not have brains. No wonder you cannot trust her conclusions if she has no brains. But I mean it's it's a funny story and somewhat is true or not but we all know bacteria you can't see it either but it exists. Wi-Fi in this room you can catch Wi-Fi it travels through also certain um, channels frequencies you cannot see radio waves many things exist within this room you can't see with your physical eyes. So there's the physical life that we have that is eternal life that we are gonna have and there is a spiritual life that whether you realize it or not, it already is here. For example, you have thoughts that I cannot see. I have thoughts you cannot see. That already shows to me the fact that in this room right now is also another world. The world where thoughts are communication point. In our world you have to speak a word and then a person understands. In that world you think a thought and the beings understand. The Bible says that world is divided into darkness and light. Essentials to the entire life. Bible reveals to us these essentials. These essentials are three people you must have in your life in order for your whole life to be victorious, to be successful and we see that from the story of the disciples of Jesus that before there was Jesus there was a John, somebody say John. John was the man who came on the scene and John's ministry or John's life was all about telling people to change. He was telling people to repent which is another word for change your ways. If you steal, don't steal. If you are lying, stop lying. John is symbolic of someone who tells you to get your act together. John is symbolic of a mentor. John is symbolic of somebody who will affect your earthly life on this earth. Who will tell you that if you don't speed and drive, if you don't steal, if you don't do all of these things, your life is gonna be awesome. John is a mentor and John is the person who affects your earthly life on this earth. He gives you rules, he gives you disciplines and when your life on this earth gets better. You must understand is that for your life on this earth, God meant your life on this earth to be really good. Initially and originally God never created death, divorce, pain, depression. Initially God never created sickness. God did not initiate funerals. God created this earth not for demons and all of his minions. God created this earth for people and God meant for people on this earth to have a life that's healthy, to have a life that's wealthy and to have the life that's happy. That was his intent. God never meant life on this earth to be what it has become today. And because of sin and because of all the wrongdoings we have drifted away and what God does is God sends people in our way like John who tell us we need to change. Sometimes those people are your parents. Well they are your parents when you're a child and they tell you that you need to change. 
and of course you don't listen to them so they if they are more traditional they use a bell to add a force to their words that you need to change but most of us don't listen to that and then we make mistakes and then we realize man I should have been listening to my parents and we must understand and then God sends somebody you know maybe a pastor or a home group leader or a coach or a basketball coach or a teacher in school or somebody in your neighborhood that God that comes into your life and says listen you can do this I'm behind you all is gonna be good and then you begin to make your life good your life on this earth will only be as good as your connection to someone who can mentor you sometimes those mentors are not physical people actually there are people you can get mentored by books the books that you read the seminars that you go to the podcast that you subscribe to the people that you go to the webinars and they impact your life and your life on earth just gets better because of John a mentor you need a mentor in your life if your life to get better you also need to choose the right mentors in your life it's interesting when David my cousin brought a testimony and he said when did his life went down when he rejected a mentor and it's amazing when you reject a good mentor Satan will always place a wrong one instead and now instead of listening to your parents you listen to your weed smoking friends who give you advice and says let's get high and then we're gonna lose our license then we're gonna lose this we're gonna lose this we're gonna start stealing and then we're gonna lose our life remember this success on earthly life is consistently connected to your mentor if you think that you're gonna be successful because you came out of your mother's womb with the Albert Einstein brain you are wrong you're only gonna be as successful as you are submissive and obedient to the mentors God places in your life and mentors are not always sent your way to just pump you up and say you are awesome you are great sometimes they're gonna be like John the Baptist change and most of us say I don't like John and then we get yourself some little Philly who always tells you you're fine you're fine you're just doing fine you're just doing wonderful when your life is a mess if you want your life on earth to be different choose a good mentor if you're in relationships who is your mentor if all of your friends who are not having good relationships you are not going to have good relationships period what books are you reading who are you hanging out with life on earth only gets as good as your mentors as who you look up to who inspires you who challenges you But it's possible to have a good life on earth and go to hell which is kind of bad because John tells people to change but John does not promise salvation John they came to John and said John you started this amazing revival are you the messiah meaning are when people follow what you're teaching are they gonna go to heaven and John says no 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 I'm just trying to get them back to where God wants them to be in the first place. Love their wives, their children. I want them to pay their taxes. I want the soldiers to stop beating women and little kids. I want those people to stop ripping people off. I just want people on earth to have a good life. But I am no Messiah. He's coming. But I'm not him. The biggest misconception of living a good life is thinking you're somehow qualified for heaven. Thinking somehow because you don't smoke weed and because you have not stole anything in the past six months that you can think of. Like no paper clip, no pencil, but all other, you know, the small things, yeah, that, they don't count. But the big things. And because in your community and in your sphere of friends, you are sort of on the top. You're not as bad as them and so then this idea creeps in John is my messiah my good life means eternal life because for God's sake heaven is for good people hell is for bad people you got this right the only problem is there is no good people only bad people you may say well I'm not bad you're not bad only if you measure yourself according to people 
and when you're going to die they are not going to judge you God will and his measurement is not going to be people his measurement is going to be himself and that's where your goodness drops that's where my goodness is not enough so it's possible to live a good life wake up in the morning be disciplined run a marathon run a mile every day drink protein shakes you know sleep less you know get all the fat out and get all the dead out and be so in shape and motivated and have all of the to-do lists and reminders you are awesome and post these selfies with the scriptures on the bottom and instagram and do all of this great shebang and when life is over that's not going to be enough because the price for successful life on earth is very low the price is simple keep the rules honor your mentor but this low price the reason why this price is so low is because life on earth is very short life in eternity is very long that's where the price goes up and the price is really 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 high something we actually cannot pay the biggest misconception that people have is when I have a good life and most people in our nation, most people, somehow believe their life is good. They may still have student debt, their car is on loan, they ha their house is not paid off, they're on 20 or 15 you know, vitamins every single day, but somehow they look at their life, they're like, I am better than the rest of the world. I'm way on the top compared to the rest of the world. And this creeps in, this idea, that my life, if it's good, that means it's going to be eternal. But it's not going to be like that. Because when you're going to die, when I'm going to die, your good life, what's going to matter is not whether your life was good or your life was hard. What's going to matter here is whether you're going to meet God's standards. And the Bible says that we are not going to meet God's standards on our own. Because what we do is not enough the religion tells us what God is going to do is he going to in the day of judgment he's going to put your good works against the bad works and if the good works win over the bad works then you're going to go to heaven and so all of us are convinced that it's all about just doing more good than bad and if we're going to get there that's exactly what's going to happen but my friend that is not how justice system works I was very unfortunate to visit a courtroom this morning not for preaching the gospel I was speeding to my home group a month ago it was a day before going to Ukraine I was such in a hurry I love my home group well I got a ticket and so I went to courtroom today and the judge explained the whole deal and you know and we we came up there and, and I'm thinking I was thinking what would happen if I get up in front of the judge and said judge in the past three or four years I have not had one speeding ticket I want you to put the three years of not having a ticket on one scale and then put the fact that for just one minute that I got caught how many times I didn't get caught Lord have mercy but the time that I got caught let's put it on the other scale and of course judge the good driving is gonna win over the bad driving so you gotta let me go off the hook but how many of you know that's not how justice works how does justice works you're good and bad against perfection so they don't judge you according between your good and bad that's your own problem they judge you between your good and bad and against perfection which means good life is very good but the moment eternity kicks in all of this good life goes in ashes it becomes sort of please forgive me because I know we spend so much time on this life but this life becomes sort of pointless in the first two seconds of eternity and the only thing that matters there is this person John told his disciples to follow why why as a Christian I believe I'm gonna go to heaven is it because I did a little bit less sinning than the rest of the people is it because after I met Jesus my life has somehow has gotten so much better though it did it's because when I am going to die and I'm gonna stand before a holy God and God's gonna pull up his measuring st statue and it's gonna be so high Bring it up. and I'm gonna stand on the scales and of course the scales are not gonna even move because God is so much perfect compared to me but see what happened is that I as a Christian I am in Jesus 
and so it's not going to be me standing on the scales it's going to be Jesus himself who will stand on the scales and I happen to be hiding in Jesus because he forgave all my sin and so Jesus and God are the same and the door to heaven will be open we that's why we receive Jesus we can have a good life even without Jesus but you cannot have a good life without a mentor or somebody to inspire you and some people even can receive Jesus and have a really difficult and challenging life if they don't have good mentors or people who will inspire them or challenge them encourage them but Jesus is the one that brings salvation can somebody say amen so we see John tells his disciples this is the Lamb of God John is saying I am here to inspire and challenge you. I am here to tell you guys change but this cannot earn your salvation. The only salvation, salvation comes only from one person and this man is Jesus and he's walking by and disciples, two disciples of John see Jesus and the Bible says they leave John for a little bit and they say we'll start walking after Jesus and for next three and a half years these disciples not only learn how to clean up their life on a surface but they also received eternal life from Jesus I want to tell you something today Jesus has come on this earth not to judge you he has come on this earth not to tell you how bad you are you already know that you don't need that reminder the devil exists to remind us of that Jesus came on this earth to remind us that God loved you so much that he was willing to let Jesus come on this earth and become like one of us to rescue us this same book few verses before says that Jesus came full of grace and full of truth when I was younger I knew Jesus was full of something but I'm gonna be honest with you I wasn't sure whether he was full of grace I thought he was full of rules I thought maybe he's full of judgment I thought maybe he is full of he gets like easily offended easily hurt he doesn't like me a lot and if I don't do something right he's just gonna get snapped and when he snaps it's just gonna go really really bad for me but the Bible says Jesus is full you know what he's full of some of you think he's full of religion because our idea of Jesus he's either Catholic, Baptist or Pentecostal and most of us think Jesus is full of grace and you know what else is? truth when I used to read this grace and truth I used to think grace is positive truth is negative Jesus is both to bring balance I used to think that grace is good grace is like awesome but the truth grace is like sugar and the truth is like salt so that you don't get you know sugar diabetes on religion so you don't get all you know Jesus loves you Jesus loves you it's like pow spanks you too you know so that you can kind of stay in shape have a little balance truth is not law truth is not spanking around truth is what God thinks about you truth it's not what you think about you that's the fact and the facts change truth is what God thinks about you and Jesus said when you receive my grace you will receive salvation and he said in the other verse in a few chapters later he said when you will know my truth he said it will make you free that means when you get this truth that he is very full of guess what's gonna make you not crazy not scared free Jesus is full of things that only make your life better that only not only when you die but also here his grace gives you salvation his truth gives you freedom Jesus loves you he cares about you the way you are maybe you have fallen lower than my cousin David Maybe you have let yourself slip and committed things that you violated your own conscience. So many times you have no conscience. Jesus is full of grace for you. And actually nobody else can help you. No medicine, no counselor and no religion ever offers even a one or zero 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 point one percent 
of what Jesus is very full of. If you're afraid to come to Jesus because you never know what's going to come out of him, I got to tell you what's going to come out of him. Grace. If you're afraid that you've done things that if you come close because maybe people see it. Jesus is not a police officer. When you make a mistake he gives you a ticket because police officer has a ticket book. Jesus doesn't have a ticket book. He has full of grace and he also has full of truth. Why truth? Because see sometimes we receive grace but we still think like the mistakes we've made. We still think like what we see in the mirror. We still think like the, the things that we've done or the things people have said about us. And after you receive grace, Jesus says, listen, you got one more thing you need in your life. You got some truth. What is truth, Jesus? That's what Pilate said. What is truth? And Jesus says, you know what truth is? Is what I say about you. And I say you're accepted. You're Jesus, but everybody rejected my family. I don't know my true parents. Jesus said my truth is higher than the facts and actually so much higher it can actually set you free if you only believe it. My grace can help you but that's where my truth needs to kick in and help you to believe that what I say is higher and what I think is so much better than whatever you think or people have said about you. Guys what I'm speaking to you about this is not baloney. This is legit. This is real deal because this little boy 13 years or 14 years ago when we immigrated to the United States and I was going to Hanford High School was skipping a keyboarding class because I was embarrassed to stand in front of a group of 25 students to do a presentation for two and a half minutes of talking about myself where I came from and everything because I was so shy and so embarrassed because I grew up believing I told myself this and this was a fact that I was nobody. I couldn't play any instruments musically. I couldn't speak. When I would speak my English was really 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 bad. You think my English is bad now? It was really bad 14 years ago. My Russian wasn't good. My Ukrainian wasn't good. I mean everything around me seemed just literally screaming at the top of its lungs. You are a loser. And then God designed mirrors to remind us of that. I looked in the mirror and I, and I looked and I saw myself completely worthless and I knew God loves me. I knew that He forgives all of my sin but I had to deal with this every single day until another thing that Jesus is very full of started to fill my life. Truth. I'm not what I see in the mirror. That I am what God says I am. That God loves me and today there's 111 people that are sitting in this room and I'm gonna tell you one thing very very honestly. I'm not intimidated or scared of nobody in this room. That's why I'm looking in your eyes and some of you like, look down right away. You get a little, you get a little bit scared now. <laughs> you know why? You think because I read some crazy book? Because I met this person who was full of two things. Grace. And he's full of truth. And he told me that I'm not ugly and worthless. My skin may be a little bit stretched the wrong way but it's completely fine. But who I am on inside is so much different. And that is what restored my life and that is what's going to change your life. Can somebody say amen. <laughs> Mentors tell us that our life can change and they help our physical life to be changed. Jesus starts a change on the inside for eternal life and Jesus is full of two things. If you don't know anything about Jesus, if anything you know about Jesus does not start with these two things. He's full of grace and truth and everything you know about Jesus you need to stop knowing. Everything you know about Jesus. Well he was born from Virgin Mary. Well that doesn't help you. Well he, he, he probably had a long beard and he had a really really nice dress. That is not going to help you in life. What's going to help you in life is to know that Jesus is full of something. And what he's full of is grace. To help you get out of your mess and truth to help you soar with wings like eagles. And truth to help, help you think higher than your circumstances and not to be trapped by the things you went through and the things people have done to you. If you don't know this kind of Jesus, you don't know the real Jesus. Because this is the real Jesus. Full of truth and full of grace. You say what about the judgment? Yes it happened when he died on a cross. God gave that judgment reserved for you on him so that today he can give you grace and he can give you truth. Can somebody say amen? amen. And disciples of Jesus
disciples of John met John and then they go to Jesus and they meet Jesus but see most of you know the story in the history Jesus died he rose from the dead and then he went to heaven and disciples were left alone but before Jesus went to heaven he said to them as John introduced you to me and you found a savior I am going to introduce you to one more person and this person is the Holy Spirit and he will come and he will be with you see I was with you for three and a half years I showed you the father you were shocked and surprised how God is so positive full of love and full of light I showed you that God is above Sabbath and law of Moses that God cares about your heart and your soul I showed you that I showed you grace I showed you truth your lives has been changed but I gotta go there's one more that's coming and disciples are like dude we've like been kicking with John for a while then John is like man I'm not good enough for you guys you gotta go up when got used to you Jesus I mean we really love you John like ate locusts and like weird his dress code was really out of style and Jesus but you are awesome you walk on water you like you rose people from the dead you made a lot of tacos from just five and two fish I mean Jesus you were so awesome and now you're leaving again I mean what is this we keep switching from one guy to another but Jesus says this next person that is coming he will be with you forever he's not gonna leave you he will be with you all the time and something happened now disciples imagine being a follower of Jesus Jesus is lifting up in heaven and the Holy Spirit is supposed to come who Jesus said it's gonna like teach you do so much more than even I did and somehow all of you guys are gonna be able to be with him I mean your mind runs wild because here is Jesus who walked on water here is Jesus who died and rose from the dead and he's saying these things I mean you know he's not bluffing he's saying the truth and disciples gather together and they're talking and say this Holy Spirit is supposed to come how is this gonna be how is he gonna look how is he gonna talk and the Bible says that just in during the prayer time something happened physically what a great physical wind hits the whole place inside now I don't know how this wind got inside without breaking the whole building that is miracle in itself and the Bible says when that happens something began to happen they started to speak in other languages and like flames of fire physical fire started to appear on their foreheads and as they spoke in those languages this wasn't just languages this was languages that other people can understand and other people were understanding while they were speaking and they were not understanding them and the Bible says that's how Holy Spirit came I want you to notice this mentors bring change Jesus brings grace and truth anywhere Holy Spirit is anywhere he is one thing will always happen supernatural unexplainable and impossible always every time Holy Spirit was involved something happened miraculous many people today know Jesus many religious people or people in the church but they do not know the Holy Spirit if I ask you who is Jesus you will get up and you will give me all of that information about Jesus but if we ask you a question who is the Holy Spirit I don't know a dove a wind a fire and people will use all of these figurative names that the Bible talks about but they will never know who the person is it's amazing how we as religious people fall in love with the characters that die and ignore the characters that are alive. When John was alive not many people liked him until he died and everybody said John was a great man. When Jesus was alive many people didn't like him until Jesus died and now everybody wants to meet Jesus everybody talks about Jesus even Muslim people say Jesus is a good prophet everybody's no nothing wrong against Jesus because he's dead but you know who is on this well because Jesus is gone what I meant not dead 
but you know who is alive now on earth is the Holy Spirit and many times what the enemy wants us to do is have this weird view about the Holy Spirit have this um this abstain stay away from the holy spirit this kind of a he's, he's different he's not sure because the enemy knows if you know the holy spirit you can do what jesus did you can do greater works than jesus did because the same holy spirit that worked in jesus that lived in jesus raised jesus from the dead that anointed jesus is the same holy spirit jesus promised to us today Jesus didn't say I'm gonna send Holy Spirit Junior. He didn't say I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit Senior or Holy Spirit the third. He said the same spirit that was there when Mary could not have a child because she was a virgin and she conceived. He made it possible because anywhere Holy Spirit comes miracles happen period. From the beginning the earth was without form and there was darkness and Holy Spirit got involved and all of it beauty started to create. If you doubt the ability of the Holy Spirit doubt the reality trees oceans air oxygen water everything because everything you see that is beautiful including a human body is an invention of the holy spirit we think holy spirit is religious he stays at the altar holy spirit was never religious he was god and everywhere he comes miracles happen everywhere you see in the book of Acts when Holy Spirit came Cornelius was a good man good man fasted prayed did good things angel comes and says your goodness is not enough you got to meet another man named Jesus who will give you eternal life Cornelius hears about Jesus receives Jesus and right away the Holy Ghost comes and first thing that happens when Holy Spirit comes supernatural things took place that's why in our church we want to talk about Holy Spirit we want people to know who Holy Spirit is. Why? Because we know Jesus said not only worship me but he said wait for another. He will talk about me. He will make you worship me and he will help you to live a Christian life. You will have supernatural things happening in your life. Can somebody say amen? Miracles is our portion. Miracles is what Holy Spirit does. Miracles is not what men do. It's not what strong men or holy men do miracles is what holy spirit does and holy spirit does these things when we develop a relationship with him can somebody say amen with that said I just want to leave you with the fact that your life wants to be needs to be blessed physical life and it can be blessed when you have mentors home group people who inspire you your eternity can only be changed because of Jesus you cannot change it by living a good life and making good decisions and when you make a decision to follow Jesus you have to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit this relationship with the Holy Spirit starts on the very night for some of you this will start tonight this is how it happens a person gives their life to Jesus sometimes you will see people crying you will see people inside because something happens on inside that it cannot be explained sometimes they feel it sometimes it's not something you feel but you just sense it on inside this cleansing that happens and the person of the Holy Spirit comes inside. Everything becomes so tender. Everything becomes so like new. You, you don't want to do bad things. It's not because somebody is telling you but because something on the inside is changing. And if you protect this and treasure this and it's not just this it's actually a person who lives inside who now wants to lead your life and many of us when we get saved we start with the person of the Holy Spirit but after a while we kind of kind of let it go and we, we forget that it's a person and we treat it as a thing or a feeling and Christianity gets reduced to rules and regulations and one thing that that Christianity lacks one thing which is everything supernatural power it has rules, discipline, it has even Bible, it has everything but there is one thing that's missing. There's nothing out of ordinary. And most of churches, most of Christians lives today have emptiness of supernatural. To have this supernatural you have to also allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Partner with Him, work with Him. He will lead you and He will guide you. Amen. To remind you of that um, we have uh, this week we are praying for some people and uh, and God touched some people I want to tell you something that for me personally 
Holy Spirit has become is becoming more a person than ever before and I do my best I'm not in any way perfect I just told you I had a ticket so the idea of me being perfect is completely gone and I'm not in any way trying to be perfect what I'm trying to do is this is there's two people that are very close to me in my life one of them is my wife and I want to do everything I can so that she's happy and I've realized living just last few maybe 10 11 months when this kind of has been becoming more real to me that Holy Spirit and the wife have few things in common they're both persons Holy Spirit is God my wife is a human but they both have emotions and they both have things they like and they both have things that they don't like and when I do things that they like I receive this not that my wife loves me more or less but my relationship with her goes so much deeper when I do things that she doesn't like and I keep doing it and doing it she will still love me but I might not be with her after some time so for me same thing is with the Holy Spirit I feel him on the side for example uh, yesterday I was driving I have this Starbucks card and I always buy my Starbucks coffee I, I, I love Starbucks coffee for the record and I love to buy Starbucks coffee and after a certain amount of coffee that you get on your Starbucks card they give you a free coffee and I did not know that until I was already passed overdue and I see on my Starbucks card that I'm eligible for free coffee so I drive up you know and I have three more stars on this new level I think golden or something and so and I come and I say hey guys I think I'm ready for a new coffee they're like yeah you are and they scan my thing and they say hmm, it's not working but we'll give you a free coffee I was like praise you Jesus free coffee blessing from God I go to another Starbucks and I said hey can I get coffee they scan my thing they're like yeah you're eligible for free coffee but but it's not working but we'll just give you a free coffee thank you Jesus so I found the trick their system doesn't work with my card and I can get as many free coffees as I can who said pastors are not smart <laughs> until yesterday I think it was my fourth cup in the past two weeks I drove up to road 68 I get my coffee and I was like man this is so awesome they don't even know but I know that probably something is wrong and I already claimed more than one cup and I hear this still small voice and I already know that this is not Vlad or even my conscience because this was something different this is Vlad next time you're gonna pay for your coffee and I was like well that is not my problem that they have a problem <laughs> They need to fix the problem so I'm debating debating but I'm like God you understand how much I love coffee and you know how much I love coffee tastes better when it's free and I'm having this debate you you have no idea how big this debate got over three bucks and I remember going to Lowe's one more time it was late evening to pick up one more part on the house that we we're working on and I know the Starbucks was open at the time and my car drove to Starbucks and I'm like I'll just ask one more time in case maybe and now tomorrow I'll start and I circled around Starbucks <laughs> left I didn't get the coffee well this morning I drove to Starbucks just to test my spirit again and uh, the card wasn't working and I told them okay like, hey, I'll pay for it and when I did that I felt the same thing in my relationship right there in the car sipping my coffee the same thing that I would feel when I would do something really really nice for my wife and today when I'm gonna pray for the sick people the same Holy Spirit whom I honor is gonna touch people this doesn't happen an accident that people get healed it's because Holy Spirit does all those things and he doesn't do him just an accident randomly when we foster a relationship the reward for the relationship is his power amen
and God wants all of us when our home group leaders when Nazar and all of them if you hear stories that Nazar will tell you of the things that you know sometimes Holy Spirit will convict him and they that our home group leaders that they do and now when they pray they see God answers their prayers that God come in this doesn't happen an accident guys Holy Spirit is real person he lives inside of you and when you honor that person respect the person you feel his presence and you read the word and you try to follow him you will see his power working in your life somebody say amen